The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the X-Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, coming to you from our studios in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Talkstar Radio Network, x Broadcast Network, Euro High Definition Radio, UK High Definition Radio, and on Star Cable. If you'd like to give us a call, worldwide, toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. My email address is x at x com. On MSN Messenger... Exxon Radio TV at hotmail.com and our website www.exxonradiotv.com. And for the latest news and the latest updates from Paragators TV, the series www.paragators.org. My guest this hour is Judica Illis, and uh, she is the author of Magic When You Need It 150 Spells You Cannot Live Without. Now, many spells and charms take days or even weeks to complete. In Magic When You Need It, Judica offers a collection of super-powered magic to help you right now. Is your career in a slump? Are you being visited by ghosts? Short of cash? Magic When You Need It can help with these problems and much more, Exxon Nation. Divided into four sections, money and career, love, sex and marriage, and children, home and trouble... Magic When You Need It offers 150 spells to help you find a job, meet your soulmate, protect your home, and many more common and not-so-common predicaments. Now, using simple instructions and ingredients that can be found in the pantry, combined with the easy-to-find magical oils and botanicals, Judica blends our old world and modern magic to provide the reader and you, the members of the Exxon Nation, with safe, effective magical remedies for many of life's troubles. Once again, Judica Illis is our special guest. Judica, welcome back to the x Great having you with us. Oh, it's great to be back. Thank you, Rob. Tell me, um, magic, Does ma- do magic spells really work? Yeah, they do really work. I mean, they wouldn't have existed for forever yeah. if they didn't work. But they're not, they're not cake mixes. And I think that's what frustrates people. They're mysterious. I could compare it to to medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, headache remedies work. Yeah. They don't. The same remedy doesn't necessarily work for every single person. At the same speed as well. And and exactly. And it doesn't, you know, and just because a headache remedy works for you Mm -hmm. four days out of five, some days you have a headache that, you know, is challenging. Yes. Spells are very similar. You have to... They're magic. They are mysterious. You have to find the right ones that work for you. And the happy news with that is that a lot of the spellcasting process is fun. Judica, as an old radio... uh... DJ yourself, <laughs> you know that we have to take something called commercials. Oh, yeah. So please stand by. Great talking to you, Judica. Always nice having you here with us in the X-Zone. X-Zone Nation, my special guest this hour is a good friend, Judica Illis. And uh, we're talking about her book, Magic, When You Need It. Her website is www.judicaillis.com. That's J-U-D-I-K-L I L. Wait a sec. J-U-D-I-K-A-I-L-L-E-S. Judica and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Whatever you do, don't go away, and if you must, back in two. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, 
X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back. Judica Illis is our special guest. www.jut... I'll get it right yet. J U D I K A. I L L E S dot com. That's J U D I K A I L L E S dot com. Judica, what are some of the most common spells that people ask you about when they meet you and find out what you do? People usually want to ask of money spells, lottery spells. Those are the ones that people ask about first. When people get you in private, then they'll start asking about things like protection. There are a lot of spells um, for physical protection, spiritual protection, Mm -hmm. um, spells to change your luck. You know, when everything is going wrong, nothing is going right in your life, what can you do Mm -hmm. to to turn yourself around a little bit? Those are those tend and love. You know, love is the standard. Everybody wants to talk about love spells. But how much of a spell actually depends on your, um, you know the old saying, if you confess it, you will possess it, your own um, mech- in, in, interior yeah. mechanism to make it happen? The, the, this, the ingredient, the unspoken ingredient in every single spell is mm-hmm. desire. You have to want it. Yeah. And that's, you have to really... The spell, and that's the key with magic when you need it. They're emergency spells because those are the spells that, especially for beginners, those are the spells that work best when you're really afraid, when you really desire something, when you really want something. The converse is that one of the reasons spells sometimes don't work is you're asking for something that you don't really want. You know, there's a conflicted emotion. And sometimes that puts, a, if, if you can envision it as a break, mm-hmm. you're asking for something. Let's say, let's say you're asking for money, but part of you doesn't think you deserve it. Or you're, you're asking for fertility spells. This is a big one where someone is asking, they, they, they go through a lot of trouble and expense mm-hmm. to cast a fertility spell, but they're ambivalent about actually having the child. Um, you know, maybe for whatever reason they're being talked into that they that they want this, but they're not really so sure. Sometimes when a spell doesn't work, one of the things you need to do is explore how badly, you know, are you really asking for what you want? Or, you know, there's a purity, a yeah. purity of desire. What What is it exactly that you want? I always recommend, I know a lot of books have rhymes and charms. I always tell people, don't incorporate any language that you don't understand and speak from your heart. A lot of spells incorporate a verbal component where you're actually stating what you want. Mm-hmm. Put it in plain English or whatever language you speak. Put it very simply and, and think about it. Are you asking for what you really want? The, it, there are a lot of benefits to spell casting that have nothing to do with the spell. And one of the benefits will be a real clarity of thought. Eventually, your your mind starts to sharpen. You become very aware of language, very aware of what other people are telling you, very aware of what you are saying. I listen to people all the time now, and I hear them say, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time for this. And think about it. What is that person really saying? You should have time, especially you know young people. Sure. You have time. I don't have time is a very ominous thing if you really interpret what's being said there. Basically, they're saying I'm really not interested. Well, they're also um, giving their lifetime a finite, you know, yeah, I mean, they're saying they're not interested. But even beyond that, they're saying mm-hmm. that they're, they don't have the time for whatever. But yes, you do. You know, a lot of spellcasting is essentially brainwashing the universe into being, into giving you what you want, into bending 
the word witchcraft, um, Wicca, mm -hmm. comes from an Anglo-Saxon root that can be translated as to bend. And you're bending reality. You're shaping it to to um, suit whatever your goal is. And, and we always, spellcasting is something that we're doing constantly. We're just not doing it consciously. If you can envision that everything, everything in life radiates some sort of a power, colors, numbers, mm -hmm. words, words are really powerful. And we are constantly fragrances when you go into your house, does it smell good? Yeah. It should. Because if you're living in a place that doesn't have a smell that's good for you, it's telling you something. There's something wrong there. And fixing it is part of it's. It's a magical process. Spell casting can really um, become part of your entire life when you're cooking. Um, every food has a sort of a magical power. When you're... You're cooking. Um, there's a traditional, very simple Russian spellcasting technique where you just speak over food or drink, and you might say, love me, and then you hand it to someone, and they drink it, and they're essentially accepting the spell, and you can do it for yourself also. People have this assumption that spells are malevolent, and of course, there are some, mm -hmm. But in general, spells are intended to make your life better. It's harnessing the different energies, the native energies on Earth, and creating a life that suits you, as opposed to the life you might just end up with if you were very passive. You know, how did the ancients, and basically what you're doing is you're bringing back a forgotten mm -hmm. art, Yes. To the 21st century. And where yes. did the ancients get this wisdom from? And if they if they have this type of wisdom, what are we missing out? The earliest documents are magical. And there are theories that the reason people learned how to write mm -hmm. is to um, record spells, to record old prophecies, to record these sort of mystical arts. It was the stimulus for writing. And, of course, there are types of writing um, – Hebrew letters, runes, yes. the actual letters are believed to be very magical. What magic brings us, and what I think many of us have forgotten in the 21st century, the 20th century, is that look around. Everything you come into contact with, everything you see here, everything has a power. Everything is in this, this is a sacredness. Mm -hmm. Everything potentially has a value and a power and it's important and it's significant and all politics aside you know there are certainly conservative magical practitioners liberal royalist you know you can name them it's, it's, it's a very very diverse community but in general very um ecologically minded because magic can't be done without plants plants the power of water the power of wind uh, the air, all those things are very important. Magic is essentially a poor person's art. You don't have to go out and spend thousands of dollars to cast a spell. Many of them can be done for free, or really, really for minimal, minimal amounts. Things, things in your kitchen, such things as, that are there already. Such as sugar, sugar, sugar is. Um, do you know how you walk by a bakery and it smells really mm. good and it makes you want to go in and buy a cookie? Yes, ma'am. I sure do. Sugar, yes. Sugar is a drawing ingredient. There's a magical component to that. I mean, why the bakery and not another type of food store? Because sugar is traditionally used to draw things to you. If you want, it, it, it's an, a component of love spells because it brings people to your door. It, you know, it brings people into the bakery. Salt is used for protection. Mm -hmm. If you ever are really, really nervous about something, you feel you feel that you have had a bad day, you feel that everything's going wrong, you feel you've been a little cursed, whatever it is, you've seen something that upsets you and you're, you're kind of off kilter, throw some salt into the bathtub and take a bath. That's considered a purifying, protective spell. Is that why if people, you if it, you wanted to up the ante a little bit, mm -hmm. throw in a little vinegar and a couple slices of lemon too, and now you've got a pretty powerful protection bath. People who watch Supernatural, 
They're constantly putting salt on the window sills, constantly drawing circles of salt, because salt is supposed to um, provide all kinds of protection. I mean, clearly it's not going to, if someone is coming, you know, into your house with malintent, it may mm-hmm. not keep out a human being, but it's supposed to provide a spiritual protection that in turn will will provide a measure of safety. Um, all kinds of food. Um, New Year's uh, noodles, um, those really, really long noodles are traditionally used. Uh, they're they're symbol, symbolic of long life, longevity. Wow. So it seems that once again, we're looking into the past to better understand how we can help ourselves in the present and how can we use the past knowledge and the present knowledge to prepare ourselves for tomorrow, the future? Well, you have to envision who do you want to be in the future? Who, who, where do you see yourself in a year, in five mm-hmm. years, in the best possible circumstances? You know, we can sit and be depressed and think about where we'll be in the worst circumstances, sure. but all things, if everything went your way, who would you be? Where would you live? What kind of a person would you be? What would be your accomplishments? Would you be Would you be alone? Would you be with someone else? Who would you be with? All those things. You, you, you can then begin step by step to create your future. But what happens if you're like me? I, I'm perfectly content with who I am. Right. I, I can't imagine anything being better in my life. I, I've the, got... the old school thing would tell you to be quiet right there because you are attracting the evil eye. But I also believe that I have the strength and the power to repel the evil right. eye. And that's what the magic spell, right, exactly. That would be what a magic spell would do, simply to maintain whatever it is that you have. Ah, gotcha. To, to protect yourself, to ward off jealousy, to ward off people who uh, would be envious, mm-hmm. um, to, you know... You can all, I tell people when they're learning how to cast a spell and they say, Judica, you, you and I have to take our news break. Please stand by. We'll be right back. Judica Illis is our special guest. J U D I K A I L L E S dot com is her website, and she's the author of Magic When You Need It. We'll be back on the other side of the news as we continue here in the X Zone. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back, everyone. Judica Illis is our special guest. Her website is www.judikailles.com. That's Judica Illis. Dot com. She's the author of Magic When You Need It, 150 Spells You Can't Live Without. Is there a difference, Judica, between a spell and a prayer? Yes. The classic, they're very close, but the mm-hmm. classic definition is a prayer is a request. You are requesting something. A spell is a demand. So a spell holds more clout. <sighs> A spell um, demands that the universe provide what you need. 
spells are, and I, I can't emphasize this enough. I mean, it's my experience. My mm-hmm. personal experience is that a lot of times when spells don't work, it's because people, there's a playing quality. When you're just playing with it, it may not really work. But when you are desperate to need, because, I mean, I had a house. I got a house out of foreclosure. That is my, you know, claim to fame. I, I couldn't get pregnant. I, you know, these are, you know, major, major life issues. Mm-hmm. When when these big things happen in your life and you just, you know, you sort of hit a point in your life and you say, well, I, I see a road opening up and I cannot go down that road. I need to create a new road for myself. When you feel that as a real reality, the spell will work. It, it is helpful to do a little playing before that because you get a sense of what works for you because there's all different styles of spell casting. There are highly ritualized styles. There are very spontaneous styles. There are things that you do only with language. There are spells using candles, spells using baths. So, you know, it's not really necessarily a good moment when you have the emergency to all of a sudden have to go out and essentially have this brand new education it's good to be prepared you know it's like the boy scouts be prepared um you know so that just in case because life does have a way of throwing this emergency so when life does do that then you're prepared to handle it i have been working on a book of saints which will be coming out at the beginning i think uh, maybe the autumn of 2011 and saints people pray to them you know, that you, you pray and you ask them to intercede. And, Certainly, yeah. You know, I mean, the churches and all kinds of shrines around the world are filled with plaques and, you know, thrown away crutches yep. and all kinds of stuff testifying to miracles received. But saints are also incorporated into magic spells. There's um, sort of a subversive aspect to um, a lot of the most popular saints, St. George, St. John the Baptist, Michael Archangel where people actually incorporate them and the spell is directed toward them. And it becomes a, sort of a different relationship, but a very affectionate relationship. So there's all types of, you know, all types of spells. It's a vast topic. All right, let me ask you, let me ask you this then. Mm-hmm. Um, are there any spells that can be cast, or let me simplify the question. What are the dangers of spell casting and divination? The danger of spell casting, you know, I'll tell you the primary danger, you might get what you asked for. Really? <laughs> so be careful. Be careful. Spells do work. So, you know, don't don't ask for something that you are not sure you really want, because it, sometimes they work anyway. Is there a difference between a spell and a curse? A curse is a kind of a spell. A curse would be classified as a type of a spell. Um, you know, sometimes we ask for things, but we don't have all the information. Mm-hmm. You know, read the newspapers. You read terrible stories about people, you know, they've just arrested this serial killer, or this mass murderer, or this, this person. And that person, you know, may have a significant other who, before that person knew the reality just thought this person was wonderful and ask for them. And, you know, we ask for things that we, how many of us end up in relationships that if we had known, you know, five years earlier, if we had known before we got into the relationship, but you know, now maybe you wouldn't have tried so hard to be in the relationship. You know, we take jobs that we think they look wonderful until you're in the job. And then all you want to do is get out of the job. You, you know, we, things are not always what they seem. And so, you know, investigate. Be sure you are asking for what is really the best for you. Um, the worst thing mm-hmm. beyond that, I think if you are operating from a position of love and respect, there aren't that many dangers. And other dangers, the spell doesn't work. And you're back where you started. Malevolent spells, curses. Texas, spells that are done out of anger or jealousy. What you want to think about beyond the ethics, there's a certain element of like attracting like. I mean, in a good way to experiment with this is go outside when you go outside today, smile at people. They and smile you'll see back. That people will smile back. Yeah. 
versus frown at people spontaneously. Don't even give them a reason. Just frown at people, mm -hmm. and you will put those people in a bad mood all day, and they will probably not be not that nice to you. If you consistently cast spells that are not um, that are hateful, you will start to get that kind of energy coming back to you. So, are, so are, did witches get a bad rap from society because a couple of witches did some negative spells and the no? Good... My theory, no, because there are plenty of negative people out there. Um, my theory is that witches or spellcasters in general um, got a bad rap because they're not obedient. I mean, if if you are very passive and obedient, spellcasting is not for you. If you are willing to sort of take whatever lumps life gives you, then take them. You, you don't need to get involved with spellcasting. Spellcasting tends to be, in, in, you know, it's all very middle class now. But once upon a time, spellcasting was very much the um, province of the repressed women. You know, there aren't that many spells. There are spells. There are spells from women getting men to behave. There are not so many spells intended for men to get women to behave because men had other methods. Spellcasting is really good for things when other methods don't work. It's not. It's not a substitute. Don't cast a spell to remove your headache if you can take an aspirin. Don't, you know, if there's a simple conventional solution, there's no reason really for the spell. Spells are for when the conventional solution isn't working or to help the conventional solution. So let's say you're looking for a job. Mm -hmm. A spell can maybe increase your chances of getting the job. It can increase your chances of more opportunities. But you still have to go for the interview. You can't cast a spell and then sit in your home quietly and wait for, you know, the hand to come out of the skies and hand you what you're asking for. And I would imagine that's what a lot of people do, and then they complain because the spell didn't right. work. Yeah, exactly. It's hand in hand. You know, you can do you can do a job candle. You can spend all this money, mm -hmm. you know, getting this wonderful candle and you get the herbs and you do whatever else you have to do. But if you're not actually looking for work also, it, it, you're really decreasing the likelihood that your spell will work. It's just like when The Secret came out. Everybody was taking these pictures or, or cutting up yeah. things, putting them up, putting them wherever they are. And, you know, I'm sorry, the Lamborghini is not <laughs> going to appear out of nowhere in your driveway, folks, unless you go out and work for it and make that happen. Right. And right. do you find a lot of people with spells when they first get into it expect too much too fast? I find that, and I have a lot of email from this, so I, I, I sort of know this for a fact, mm -hmm. spells when they are written, and I'm, I'm responsible for this too, the easiest way to write a spell is in the form of a recipe. You know, it's, it's in steps. First, you, you know, step one, step two, step three, you do this, and then you do this, and you do that. Mm -hmm. And it looks like a recipe. And when you do a recipe or when you do a science experiment, if you follow the steps, you, you know, if, if you buy the cake mix, and if you do what the steps say, you will have what the picture in the box looks like. You know, it's pretty predictable. Spells are not that predictable. Sometimes they work better. Sometimes they work in different ways than you expected. It's hard to time them. People want to know when will the spell work. Often they work pretty quickly. And a, a standard measure is to wait for a lunar cycle before you start getting nervous about it. But sometimes they work in odd ways. It's magical. It's, it's not entirely predictable. So I think that's frustrating for people. They, you know, they did all the steps right, and so where is the result? Also, and, I, and this may this may sound silly, but for a lot of people, this is important. When you there's a lot of spell casting on television, television shows like Charmed or Buffy, you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Mm -hmm. uh, on TV, it's it's a visual format. There are special effects. 
you know, you get lights, you get smoke, you get sound effects. It doesn't happen in real life. It's, it's a little anticlimactic. And that may sound very matter, you know, that may sound very obvious, but for it's not for many people. They're looking for, you know, the smoke and mirrors. And when you don't have that, the magic and the spell comes when it works. Or in the process, there, there's there's a beauty to a lot of the process. It's it's very satisfying if you if you candle magic. It's called dressing. You dress a candle. You you rub it with oil and you infuse it with your emotion, and you can carve it and you can carve it with romantic materials like a rose thorn. There's a very satisfying ritualistic aspect to it. It can make you very happy. There's a lot of joy in spell casting. But you have to sort of put your heart into it. If you do it in a mechanical way, you, you won't really reap those benefits. Right. Hmm. So how can your book help people in their day or in their day-to-day lives? What kind of spells do you have in your book out of the 150 that you can share with us? We've got about two minutes before I go to the next break. That the people, one people always ask me about is boss fix for is, a make, to make your boss be nicer to you. Really? And the, yeah, the formula is in the book, but basically it, it's harder to do now because less people smoke. And you used to have to take a cigarette from your boss's pack and you would remove the tobacco um, and you would grind it up with the newspaper mm-hmm. from your boss's paper and, and make a very fine powder because it, it has to be surreptitious. You know, if somebody, if your boss finds a big pile of powder in his office, he might be out of the job and... That's a different way to get him. That's not the way you wanted to get him off right. your back. Um, but you make this very fine powder and you sprinkle it so that your boss walks over it. And people claim that it, it has good effects. It, um, you know, it, it will make your boss be a little kinder to you or maybe ignore you, if, which is not always a bad thing. Right. So that, that is the, the spell that I probably get the most mail about. But how much of a spell is actually the spell and not the person's perception that they did this, so this should happen, so they themselves actually make the change happen, and it has nothing to do with the spell? Well, I mean, the person does make that change happen. I mean, the spell is really the format by which you do it. And mm-hmm. there, that's why there are different kinds of spells. I mean, it, it is you. You're, you're doing it. Or you may be doing it in conjunction with with an angel or some sort of a spirit, but you're doing it. Um, I guess you know that the spell worked because sometimes sometimes we want things very badly and they don't work. You know, it, it is not the power of positive thinking sometimes is sufficient and, and sometimes it's not. The various ingredients in a spell, the various herbs or minerals, they're sort of your allies. They lend you their power. And they help you achieve your goal. But without your input, without your efforts, without your goal, there's no spell. So that that's the most crucial part. So it's all part and parcel. Yeah, some people have really, really powerful will. I mean, and that's, that's an old esoteric concept of will. Judica, stand by, my dear. You and I have to take our final break. Exonation, our very special guest this hour is Judica Illis. She is the author of Magic When You Need It, 150 Spells You Can't Live Without. Her website is www.judicaillis.com. That's J-U-D-I-K-A-I-L-L-E-S. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as we do our final wrap for this segment of the Exxon and tonight's show. Don't go away. We'll be back. Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the Exxon Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Thank you. 
And welcome back, everyone. Uh, Judica Illis is our special guest this hour. She is a spell collector, fortune teller, crisis counselor, and a spirit worker who has um, magicked herself out of many an emergency situation. She is the author of Pure Magic, a complete guide to spell casting, and the Element Encyclopedia of 5,000 Spells, the ultimate re- referent book of magical arts. She lives in New Jersey and workshops across North America. You can visit her online at www.judicaillis.com. That's J U D I K A. I-L-L-E-S. Uh, first of all, Judica, I want to thank you so much for joining us. It's always a great pleasure talking to you. Uh, but I have to ask you, where did your interest in spells come from? Oh, God, I don't know. You know, since I was a little girl, mm-hmm. since I was tiny, um, I've just always had a love for, you know, people would, be, I, I grew up on fairy tales. And even when I was three, four years old, they'd right. read Hansel and Gretel to me. And I identified with the witch, not the children. So, I don't know. It's always been, you know, some of us just were called early. It, it, it's really been um, that music. You know, mm-hmm. I've been having such a good time listening to the wonderful music you've been playing. They're like my two eternal loves. Do you think that there will become a, t- or a time when people will realize that witchcraft is nothing to fear? It's actually a very ancient religion. Uh, no one I know has ever had anything negative happen to them because of witchcraft. In fact, witchcraft is, you know, is is to me a a religion of, of love, not only for each yeah. other but for but for nature. I think every religion on earth, and, and literally every one, mm-hmm. the majority of their adherents are, you know, kind, good people. And every religion certainly has people who are not so kind, but that's not, that's just, that's how people are. That's not necessarily a reflection of the religion. There are, there are unhappy people and unhappy people sometimes behave badly and they could come from any walk of life. Not necessarily, you know, they're not necessarily interested in the magical arts or in witchcraft or in a nature based religion that that could be anywhere. Um, People are, you know, one thing to think about is that anything that is unknown or that we don't know how it works yeah. appears very mysterious. I was reading um, books from like the um, early days of electricity and magnetism. Um, people perceived them as, as very mysterious. It was it was a strange occult force. So, you know, Matt, who knows? Maybe someday we'll be able to measure the forces that are used in the spell, and it won't even look magical anymore. Judica, you and I have to say so long for now. We've just run out of time. As always, great Thank talking you to you. Thanks very much for joining us. My I pleasure. love I love Thank talking you. to you, and uh, thanks for talking to us about your new book, Magic, When You Need It, 150 Spells You Can't Live Without. And Exonation, for more information, www.judicaillis.com. Dot com. Well, that's it for tonight, everyone. I'll be back tomorrow night at 10 o'clock as once again we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the X-Zone. So until then, always keep your eyes to the sky and your heart to the light. Good night now. <laughs>